Being that my videos on mental health seem to get the ire up of a certain Brazilian viewer, I thought I'd make yet another one, because the conversations are too good to be true. But this video is about two therapists, one that was very good and had survived quite a long time in the mental health field, starting her career in the 1960s, and the other, I'll just call her Dizzy Bobblehead, because I know one of my viewers will know exactly who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. Remember Dizzy Bobblehead. <laughs> okay, so the first therapist, who actually agreed with me on everything, only had an associate's degree, because that's all that was required in this state to be a therapist back in the 60s. She had many, 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 many years of direct hands-on experience doing therapy with many varied clients. Her view on medication was exactly like mine. And that is this, medication never delivered the promise that it promised, which was you take crazy people, you give them pills, and they stop being crazy. Now, many people that are new to the field of psychology, those in school, like to think that psychology is based in fact, that we know all this stuff about the brain, and we know exactly what goes on in the brain that causes this symptom or that symptom. But if you look into it, you will find out that there's very little actually known about this. Um, some of the things, for example, like PTSD, they say that there's a smaller hypothalamus in people with PTSD. However, not in everybody with PTSD symptoms, okay? So what you'll find out is these brain, the, what we supposedly know about the brain and mental illness does not pan out. Same thing with genetics, to say that there's a genetic predisposition to this mental illness or that mental illness. What you will find out is there is a genetic predisposition to having mental illness, generally speaking, but not a specific type of mental illness, once you really, really dig into the data. Now, to go further, this one uh, therapist that started in the 1960s really did know what she was doing because she's done it for so long. What's interesting is the new school or new brew of psychologists and psychiatrists didn't really respect this woman because they, she only had an associate's degree, not a master's degree or a PhD or a PsyD. So the thing is this. This other therapist, which I will call Dizzy Bobblehead, uh, she was an accuser. And this is what you see in the new brew of psychology students. Accusers. They accuse. Everybody is borderline. Now, this woman, Dizzy Bobblehead, as I'll call her, was again an older woman that blamed her low station in life and her late attendance of college to an overbearing husband. Okay? She was a man-hater, and she would voice her opinion about her husband, who was supposed just really seriously to clients about how she succeeded despite her overbearing, horrible husband. Uh, she was an accuser. One of my clients that, again, this, this girl had serious social anxiety issues, things of that nature. This uh, therapist, Dizzy Bobblehead, accused her of being a sexual prevert, okay? Now, I'm no genius. I'm not a therapist. I didn't go to school for psychology. I went to school for criminal justice, uh, personal training. But I do know this. If, if a young girl is a sexual prevert, there are things that probably happened to them that turned them into a sexual prevert. Now, Dizzy Bobblehead, on the other hand, who was a devout Roman Catholic, accused the girl of being a sexual prevert, and if she stopped being a sexual prevert, all of her social anxiety and uh, other issues would just magically disappear. All she had to do was stop acting a certain way. Again, new brew of psychological students, accusers. Another thing with this woman, Dizzy Bobblehead will call her, despite her age, like I said, she went to school quite late because of her allegedly overbearing husband that did nothing but give her a roof over her head, take care of her and her rotten kids. Now, this is the thing with her. Borderlines, she would classify people by their illness, their quote illness, okay? Borderlines, she didn't like working with the borderlines, okay? She would classify groups of people, chunk them off by their diagnosis. Now, she was somebody that believed in the textbook. The textbook was always right. So what I'm getting at, she would believe in basically the DSM like it was a Bible, like there was no deviation from the DSM. 
And this is because she was of this new brew of psychology students. Now, some of the newer psychology students that were of a younger age, they were nervous as hell. Some of them, and this is, this is another thing, some of the most, if not all of the people I know that have been psychologists, including personal friends that went to school for psychology and then decided this is bullshit, I'm doing something else like uh, doing stock at a store. <laughs> okay, now, psychology students, why are people drawn to psychology? They are damaged on the inside. They want to get free therapy. That is nine times out of ten why somebody goes and majors in psychology. But what you will see is these people that major in psychology. Now, I have diagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder from a situation that happened when I was a child. I witnessed a very bad event, uh, and I had to perform uh, first aid on somebody that didn't make it when I was a young child. Uh, it, it was not a very pretty scene. Now, I've been diagnosed with PTSD because of that event and a, num a number of other events. I, had real, I have real reasons to be shaken up. These kids, these college kids, are a bundle of friggin' nerves. They can't stop shaking. They get so intimidated by just everyday behaviors of mentally ill people. For example, there was a gentleman, um, he was like Lenny from Of Mice and Men. Big son of a bitch. And he was mentally retarded. He had an IQ of about 55, I think is what it was diagnosed as. And he, good guy, he, he did damn near kill his family members and everybody was afraid of him because he did time in prison for nearly killing his family but yet all these great psychology students and these great psychologists and these case managers and everybody else never asked why well it turned out that his family were abusive assholes but nobody ever knew that because nobody had the sense to ask the poor guy why did you try to do this to your family? Why did you go to prison? Okay? So what I'm getting at here is there is a habit that I found in lots and lots and lots of people that work in mental health at all levels, whether they're therapists, psychologists, counselors, uh, psychiatrists, even the administrators to accuse the mentally ill of either being untruthful or being uh, dishonest in some way, shape, or form, faking symptoms, or just being, uh, being the way they are because they're lazy, stupid. I mean, it is remarkable, the accusations by the, the profession of mental health. Now, this is not, again, I'm not saying that these people that get into mental health are bad people, but what I'm saying is you see a lot of transposing. Why do people accuse people of being dishonest? To take the heat off of them because they're dishonest. Why do people accuse people of being sexual preverts? Well, that's because they're a sexual prevert. Any, and I've also found this, remind you, this particular therapist, Dizzy Bobblehead, was a devout Roman Catholic, very devout. What have I found about people that express hyper-religiosity? They are hiding things like sexual perversion. So by transposing that onto a, every freaking client that's a girl, you will see that she is hiding her own perversion or her own thoughts of perversion. Now, with a client I shared with, another client I shared with her, a gentleman, her accusation against him was he was a racist, overbearing, white male. Like her allegedly overbearing husband that kept her from succeeding in academia in which she amounted to getting a mere master's degree in psychology, which is a bloated, useless field with no proven benefit to its recipients.